In this video, I'm going to share with you my current top five favorite foundations, extremely versatile ones, particularly suited for mature skin and for a wide range of skin types from dry to combination ones with buildable coverage from light to medium high. Hi, my name is Mirisa. Thank you for coming to my channel where we talk about everything beauty and lifestyle focusing on over 50 issues. I'm extremely happy to be doing this video in collaboration with my very good friend here on YouTube, Katrin, which has an amazing channel called Cat's Eye Beauty, focusing mainly in their two main interests, skincare and makeup, from high-end to drugstore. Katrin used to be a professional ballet dancer and you can definitely see it in her natural elegance and poise. She also has a particular interest in testing out and reviewing new foundations and I'm so interested in checking out her video because I know that her suggestions are going to be great. I would be extremely happy and pleased if you would check out her video and her channel after seeing this one. I will place the link for her video in the end card on the cards above and below on the description of this video. I would like to start by saying that I have a 51-year-old mature skin, a combination one, particularly oily on my T-zone, especially since I started my HRT treatment, and here on the cheeks is more on the normal dry side, sensitive and with rosacea. Because of my redness and pigmentation, I particularly tend to medium, medium high foundations or at least buildable ones with natural skin finish and that cannot be drying on account of these more complicated areas that need to be on that sweet spot between not drying but not too emollient in order for me to be able to wear them on my T-zone just by powdering them. Although I can wear occasionally foundations with fragrance, alcohol or essential oils, the ones that I'm going to share with you do not have those type of products. So I feel that they will be possibly suited for you as well if you have sensitive skin or rosacea like me. My first foundation is the IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skin Care and this is a great one, particularly appropriate for normal to dry skins, but combination ones like mine also can wear it applying powder on the T-zone. I find it extremely hydrating with a buildable medium coverage, a soft luminous finish and on me it wears about eight hours, but I'm sure that skins that are less oily will have a longer wear than eight hours. It has a creamy consistency, but it feels very lightweight on the skin and I particularly like to apply it with a sponge. It comes in a glass bottle with 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce content with a pump, which is obviously great. And it's retailed for 32.5 pounds or 39.5 US dollars in 40 shades here in UK. But I think that the number of shades that are available depends on the countries and also on the sites where they are marketed. I use the shade Light Neutral 22, but I find this one a little bit too light for me. I can wear it though. I just need to warm it up with a bronzer. As I said, this one is particularly hydrating and it's infused with great skincare ingredients. So I find it particularly suited for normal to dry skins. My next favorite one is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Foundation. And this one, despite being a classic and being available, I don't know how many years now, it's still the one that I wear when I want to have a foundation that is really long wearing, up to 10 hours, even if I have to powder it. And it's definitely the one that I reach for when I want the highest coverage, since this one can be built from medium to high. I think that normal skins to oily ones will particularly enjoy using this one, although the dry ones can use it if they prime their skin very well. 
It has a soft matte finish, doesn't look dry on the skin. And currently here in UK, it's retailed in a whopping 61 shades. Although, as I said before, I'm not sure if that number of shades is available in all countries. It comes in a very nice glass bottle with 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce, but without a pump. This one uh, we can get uh, individually from Estee Lauder or there are other ones that you can get in Amazon that will suit this bottle as well. I don't have an exact uh, shade match on Estee Lauder for me independently of the number of shades, but I typically use the shade 2N1, which is a light neutral one and it's called Desert Beige. A great workhorse and definitely the one that I reach for when I want high coverage. My next favorite one is actually a tinted moisturizer, although it behaves like a foundation. And it's the Laura Mercier oil-free tinted moisturizer. And although they say it's oil-free, I would recommend this one for combination to dry skins, not for oily ones, because I find it's hydrating enough and personally, in me, I have a natural finish with this and I have to powder it in order to ensure it wears up to 8 hours. It comes in a squeezy tube with 50 milliliters or 1.7 fluid ounces and it's retailed in 20 shades for £36 or $47. It's enriched with oil absorbing powders and skincare ingredients like licorice and squalane and vitamin E and it also has a broad spectrum SPF 20 sunscreen in it although personally I don't rely on it for protection of course. I like to apply it with my fingers and I find that I can achieve a solid medium coverage with this one with a natural finish and a very skin-like appearance. The last foundation was quite unique until last year in my collection because of its skin-like appearance, but I find that recently it has gotten some good competition, as I've shown you previously, but it's still one of my favorite ones, and this is the Surat Dew Drop Foundation, and this is by far the most expensive one of all the ones that I've mentioned and that is why I use it very sparingly. It's It comes in this unique packaging which has a drop system by pressing on the bottom and uh, the packaging only contains 19 milliliters so much less than the typical 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce and it's retailed for 75 US dollars or 70 pounds in 20 different shades. I use normally the shade number four, which is described as a light with a yellow undertone. And what makes this foundation so special? It's its lightweight consistency. It's a very liquid formula and the coverage can be built from light to medium, resulting in a very natural skin-like appearance to the skin with just that soft luminous finish to it. It's a very beautiful result and I think it looks particularly well in dry skins. On me it gets particularly dewy in my t-zone so I definitely need to powder it if I want to achieve a wear time of seven to eight hours. But anyway, if you have dry skin and you are okay with the price tag, I would definitely suggest this one because you will like it. One final recommendation though, and I would definitely have to mention it because the result of this foundation is truly amazing. It looks wonderful on the skin. And although I do not recommend it for dry skins because it has alcohol in a very high quantity, I most certainly recommend it for all the skins that don't have problem with alcohol, oily to normal ones, and this is the L'Oreal True Match Nude. And this foundation really took me for surprise because it gives the most skin-like appearance with a solid medium coverage. It looks really, really, really good. And to be honest, if it didn't have alcohol in its formulation, I would definitely replace the Surat for this one. 
the issue is that when I apply this foundation on my cheeks and if I'm not careful to moisturize it very well, I will feel the skin tightening. So I don't feel comfortable in using this one every day as I would with this one. But I will definitely keep it in my foundation wardrobe because it's that good. And my last favorite foundation is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. And I've made a dedicated video very detailed with my full two days wear test on it. So I've placed it here on the cards, on the end card and below on the description of this video. So check it out if you are very curious. But I would just say that probably this one is the most skin-like of all the foundations that I've mentioned until now. And despite that, achieves a very solid medium coverage, which makes it one of the most performing foundations that I have in my collection. I would not suggest it for oily skin because even me with a combination one, I have to powder it to achieve an eight hour wear. And if you have a dry skin, you will have to hydrate it because I think the main focus of this foundation is not to provide moisture. It's not a moisturizing CC cream, for instance. The main goal of this foundation, which I think is achieved, is to provide a soft focus to the skin and that long wearing skin like appearance. It comes in this beautiful, very tactile glass bottle with a pump in 40 shades and it's retailed for £44. I got mine in the shade... I got mine in the shade 9, which is described as a light medium with olive undertone. If you ask me to compare these two, for instance, they are very different. I feel that dry skins will probably enjoy this one a little bit more just because it's really more hydrating than the Lisa Eldridge one. On the other side, if you have a more normal skin type and unless you prefer a more radiant look to your skin, I think you will prefer the Lisa Eldridge. One thing is certain, I most definitely prefer more the consistency of this foundation, which is a little bit more creamy than the Surat one and the packaging and the feel of the bottle and the pump. In my opinion, all foundations should come with a pump. I hope you have liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you did like it, I'm sure you will also enjoy the video that I did last week on my favorite concealers. Also, please don't forget to check out the video from my dear friend Cat's Eye Beauty. I'm sure that you will enjoy it as well. It will be here on the end card. Thank you so much for watching and until my next one, bye!